usually, whenever I'm given the opportunity to speak, I spend at least 15 minutes telling the audience all the reasons that they should think I'm awesome. But for some reason, they've only given me one slide to do that tonight. And so, while I don't see a reason for it, I guess this slide will have to do. <laughs> keep it going, keep it going, don't get lazy! Don't get lazy! That's right! 30 seconds ago, most of you didn't know who I was. But because I appear to be in a position of authority, you are willing to mindlessly do what I say. <laughs> In fact, most Americans would be willing to kill a stranger if instructed to do so. It's scientifically proven, and I know that because of this man, Dr. Robert Cialdini. Isn't he beautiful? He's a social psychologist. In fact, he's the most frequently cited living psychologist in the world. And he's local, having been a professor at ASU. Most people are surprised to find out that I am not gay, but they have... <laughs> No, uh, they are not surprised at all to find out that I would strongly consider making love with Dr. Cialdini if presented with the opportunity, because his book has influenced me so profoundly. In it, he describes six powerful tools of automatic influence. They are so powerful in, because they are automatic. They don't require reason, logic, persuasion, or uh, anything else. They just work. So I, I set out like a mad scientist to find out how these principles would work in my own world. And I owe you an apology. Each of these experiences would take longer than five minutes to explain in depth. So I'm going to try and get through as many as I can in this presentation. One other warning, this is not real science. At best, it's pseudoscience. A social psychologist would point out all sorts of confounding variables, which I tried to minimize, but I'm not perfect. Almost, though. So. Picture, if you will, a marketing conference, and like all good experiments, mine begins with a lie. In this case, there were three breakout rooms, and I got permission from the organizer to tell the people in each of the rooms that one of our fellow attendees had had a, a family hardship and needed financial help to get home and take care of it. So I made the request and asked people to put their name and the amount they were willing to donate on a slip of paper, turn it in, and these were the results you see here. In the second room, I did the same thing, but with a slight twist. About two minutes prior to making the announcement, I gave everybody in the room a snack-sized Snickers and a bottle of water. When I made the request, even though I'd only invested 25 cents in a couple of snacks, they, had, they actually donated significantly more, like you can see behind. It was an exponential return on my investment. Why does this work? Dr. Cialdini calls it the law of reciprocity. But you and I have been familiar with it ever since we've been able to speak. The golden rule, yin and yang, what goes around comes around, Newton's law. All these things mean that we are hardwired to give back. And savvy influencers may take advantage of that. When I got to the third room, I didn't give them anything of value. Instead, I gave them this one question survey, um, and then I made my request. When I did so, people were visibly annoyed and felt manipulated. <laughs> but the results speak for themselves. Despite that, had we given that survey to everybody there, we would have raised three times as much money. Now, perhaps I should consider retitling Dale Carnegie's famous book to How to Make Enemies and Influence Them Anyway. <laughs> the principle at play here is consistency. We're inclined to do what we've said we will do and how we view ourselves. It's why it's actually very effective before you tell a secret to say, can you keep a secret? The last principle that I want to speak about is social proof. This is the idea that we tend to do what we see other people doing. To the age-old question, would you jump off a bridge if so-and-so are doing it, the scientific answer is probably if enough other people were doing it too. In my own profession, this uh, plays out very well in Facebook ads. Take two identical ads targeting the same audience, same title, same image, same copy. If people are told that one of their other friends likes the page, they're almost three times more likely to click. Well, we're nearly at the end, and I haven't had time to talk about the two last principles, scarcity and liking. I can't remember which photo represents which principle. <laughs> so I hope that you will read the book. I look forward to chatting with you after, in the after party, and have a great night!